What's going on, y'all? Machiavelli Mills TV. Y'all hit the like button and hit the subscribe button as well. So the other day, man, when I was on my YouTube live stream, one of my subscribers was like, yo, Mac, I've been following you. Uh, I've been subscribed to your channel since you started talking about Kwame Brown and you was clowning him out, right? And so a lot of people think the genesis of me, like not liking Kwame Brown, started with, oh, because he attacked LeBron James. That's not the genesis of why I don't fool with Kwame Brown. Let me tell y'all the moment I recognized that Kwame Brown was a clown. And I recognized what he was trying to do with his YouTube channel. And who and who he was a and who he was trying to appeal to. I'm sorry. I'm stuttering. I recognized exactly who he was trying to appeal to. Y'all remember when Kwame first started gaining traction on YouTube when he called out Steven Jackson and Matt Barnes, right? After all after an all the smoke interview that they did, right? I went to Kwame Brown's channel and I I did something that I usually do as a YouTube junkie. When I discover a person's channel, I look at their previous content before they got popping. And I looked at his content, and when I'm looking, I see him victim shaming Breonna Taylor for her own death. Baby girl, you dating such and such type dude, this this type of stuff could happen to you. And it just, you know, just victim shaming Breonna Taylor. And I'm like, yo, okay. You know, then I I looked at the setup of his YouTube, you know, like his whole setup that he does his videos in, and I see an American flag sitting proudly shining bright. And I told y'all about black men who have American flags all through their house and stuff like that. I don't trust them black men. I'm sorry. A lot of y'all going to take offense to that. Yes, I know in America we have a lot we have it a lot better than every other country. Yes, I'm glad that I live in America and all of that, right? But I recognize that we as black men in our culture, we just don't be riding around with American flags. Cause as a black man, what the fuck you so patriotic about? <laughs> now no disrespect. We like it's a lot going on with our people in this country. A lot that has happened to our people. For you to be flying, unless we watching the Olympics when we watching, you know, track and field and basketball and you know, all of that, okay, that's cool. Outside of outside of the Olympics, when have you like when you see a black man with a whole bunch of American flags all around, you know something about that brother. You know something. You know he has been compromised. You know most of the time when he has he has opinions, his opinions do not stand in solidarity with black people until it benefits him, until it benefits his interests. I'm being for real. Y'all know I ain't lying, especially when that black man who got that who has that American flag sitting right there is wearing Duck Dynasty type clothes, hunting clothes, and he got on Bugle Boy polos. I know what time it is, bro. And I know who you're trying to appeal to because it's not black folks. It's not black American people. You're not. You know, and so I watched all of that. I watched them victim shame Breonna Taylor for her death. I watched them wear them Bugle Boy polos. <laughs> And Duck Dynasty hunting clothes as his regular apparel. And I was like, oh, I know what type of channel this is. This is a good old boy channel. This is a I'm not like the rest of those black men type channel. This is a, oh, you know, I'm two shades off of the Jason Whitlock coin type channel. That's what it is. The only time J the, um, Kwame Brown speaks in solidarity with black men is when he's talking about Stephen A. Smith. And certain uh, um, talking heads in sports, oh, they talk, they downgrade, they talk about black men, they denigrate black men and rake their names through the coals and drag them and, 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 and you know, uh, just talk, put filth all on their name. They, they talk terrible about these black athletes, these black men athletes. I'm here to stop it. I'm the crusader against it. And then when you watch the Kwame Brown Bus Life channel, his channel was has turned into the same thing he started speaking against. He clowning out Stephen A. Smith for talking about black men who never did nothing to him. When we know, the, we see the amount of vitriol, the way he talk about LeBron James. LeBron ain't never said nothing to him, nothing bad about him, ain't never did nothing to him. But he loves to trash LeBron James everywhere, every, every single way, every single chance he gets. Because Kwame Brown has figured out when you take some anti-black stances, when you ride with, uh, you, not, you know, you're a LeBron James hater, you get a lot of subscribers, particularly anti-black conservative subscribers. 
right? When you talk about, when you victim shame Breonna Taylor and blame her for her death, right? And you wearing them Duck Dynasty clothes. When you got American flags sitting up in the picture with you, again, when, and, and you wearing them Bugle Boy polo shirt, shirts, I know what type of time you on. So I recognize, oh, this dude is hypocritical than a motherfucker. And we all can be hypocritical at times. But he turned into the very same thing he swore up and down Stephen A. Smith was. Trashing other people. Hey, I, you know, I keep it sports. You keep it personal. Stephen A. Smith is making a personal attack. Well, Stack says something. Stephen, Stephen Jackson says something made a joke about your career. Then you start talking about Matt Barnes' personal life. With his ex-wife and Derek Fisher and his kids and all of that. And somebody laying up with your kids in your car, taking your kids, doing all of that, taking it personal. When Stack was making a joke about your career. And then you getting mad at, at Matt Barnes, you know, for something Stack really said. And Matt laughed a little bit, but Stack was the one that threw the joke in there and all of that. And you start talking about that man's home life with his children and his ex-wife and all of that. And then Kwame would get pissed if you say the same thing about him. He wanted an apology for, from Charlemagne for bringing out his family's history of violence. You know, he had a family history with, with violence with his father and brother and all of that. He got mad Charlemagne brought that up and all of that. You know, but then bringing up Stephen, uh, um, Matt Barnes situation with his ex-wife and Derek Fisher and his kids and all of that. And regardless if we knew it or not, you took it personal and you say you don't do that. You keep it sports and you get mad at Stephen A. Smith for, for making it seem like personal attacks are being taken at athletes. But you're doing the same thing. You know what I mean? So I recognize all of that a mile away and I know them plays, man. So when I saw all of that, I knew exactly what I needed to know about Kwame Brown. I had no interest in standing with that brother because I know where his interest lied, where, where it lies. You know what I mean? He go wherever the way the wind blow as far as YouTube monetization goes. He figured out the algorithm. Okay, hate LeBron James is the main one. You hate LeBron James, but you don't have enough courage, enough strength, enough mental fortitude to go at the men who really bullied you, who really was punking you, who really was really making you an errand boy, who really was out here being big bad bully to you, Michael Jeffrey Jordan, right? Because Mike was punking him, sunning him kicking balls in the stands, making him go fetch it after the games, having him work out before the game, after the game, clowning Kwame, you know what I mean? Like, just m making Kwame a go-and-fetch-it boy for him. But he's scared to say something about Mike because he knows if he attacks Michael Jeffrey Jordan, the subscribers that he built up off of LeBron James hate will say, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute now. You can't be talking about MJ. Come on, guy. We, it's okay if you talk about LeBron. We hate LeBron mutually. It's all right if you talk about LeBron, but don't say it about MJ, man. Come on, man. Don't talk about Air Jordan. Don't talk about MJ. Don't know. Come on, Kwame. You're better than this, man. Don't talk about MJ, even though MJ was hoeing you and treating you like a B-I-T-C-H. He was being you or he was hoeing you, but please don't talk about MJ. He know they're going to get mad. They're going to start calling Kwame a bust. If he starts talking about Michael Jordan, the same way Kobe was and Kobe was hoeing Kwame too, punking Kwame too. He knows if he says something negative about Kobe being Bryant, his subscribers will turn on him and start calling him a bust. And they will start really saying the things that they really realize he's doing. You know, they will start attacking him. So he knows in order to keep his fan base happy and satisfied, he got to keep trashing LeBron James because that'll keep him on. It'll keep him in the good graces of people. Real people, real serious black folks who are serious about black people and who recognize bullshit from a mile away, they don't really take subscribe to what Kwame Brown be talking about. We know the play. I can see that from a mile away. I know how his whole MO is set up. I know the play. I know his I know his whole goal for how he attacks certain um topics, the certain things that he says. I know what he on. And you can see it, what he was on before he got famous. Trashing Breonna Taylor, victim shaming her. I watch what people do before they get famous, and that's who they really are. That's who Kwame Brown really is. When you see them, duck, duck, what type of black man walk around with Duck Dynasty hunting clothes on and Bugle Boy polos? Fuck going on around here, man. I know what time Kwame on. Been to it.